What's going on, everyone? My name is Jason, and this is the Puget Sound. I'm just kidding. This is Redfish Bluefish. I hope you guys are doing wonderfully this Friday afternoon, approaching early evening. I know a lot of you guys are kind of shut in right now like I am. I thought I'd start off with a few views of, uh, of nature some beautiful trees, some lightly bruised, but still beautiful skies. Hey, Muppet, Susan, Sandy, see a lot of people in here. Thanks for piling in. Griffin, what's going on, bud? Been watching your stuff. Yeah, that is the Olympic Peninsula. Way out there. Those are mountains, not clouds. And they go, but you kind of can't see around some of these trees. But just thought I'd give you guys a little view. Take a little, take a little breather before we start talking about other stuff. Hey, Arpit, Cody, son. Welcome, guys. Just taking a little look around at some trees before we head down into the fish dungeon and the the lab might actually take a look over here show you guys this really weird tree that i have this is a monkey puzzle tree just a little divergence before we get started with fish stuff and tissue culturing and what have you hopefully i don't lose signal i'm on wi-fi i'll be looking at my screen very carefully this strange tree right here I don't know if you can see its kind of tendril like appearance it's this very strange tree here and get closer but we'd certainly lose signal it's a very interesting tree it's from South America. It was very, very popular back in Victorian Victorian times. People used to import them and have them put on their, their property to kind of show off to other rich people. Pretty trippy. Very, very strange tree. Let's see if I can get a better vantage point this may be better very weird it's uh it's an evergreen you can't really tell but it's covered in leaves that are actually very very sharp needles and so is its trunk you see that trunk has a kind of a Jurassic appearance to it. Oh, yes, thanks. Our pit, yeah, that's a rhododendron. It's our uh, state flower of Washington State. Yeah, um, this tree is covered in spikes. It's not very nice. And uh, the belief, sorry for the shakiness, let me zoom back out. <laughs> the belief long ago was um, that uh, it was so inhospitable to being touched touched by you know people humans that uh monkeys couldn't climb it and uh boy were they wrong totally wrong so i just thought i'd show you a few shots before we head in down into the belly of the beast hey guys it's me I was getting dive bombed by an angry bee over by that rhododendron. He was not happy. Okay. Just heading down. Oops. And we'll get this show on the road. I've done some, uh, some setup, some uh, early setup this time to uh, kind of save time, you know. 
You guys have seen me do a lot of uh, a lot of work in here before, but we'll get to that in just a moment. Oh, thanks, Colette. Appreciate it. Hey, Father Fish, our pit. Thank you. Let me uh, come in here and uh, seat myself for a moment, have a talk with you guys before we get the show on the road. It has. Uh, it's been a week. <laughs> That's for sure. It has been an interesting week for me. Sorry, let me fix this, guys. So, um, like I said, um, I think in a few uh, live streams, uh, people's live streams over the weekend, as well as, um, I, I think I actually made a uh, one of those YouTube kind of community posts about it. Um, hey, Big J, welcome. Susan, welcome. Chattanooga Ed. Man, we got so many in here. Actually, let me run through this list before I, I talk to you guys about what I got to talk about. Loads of people in here. Thanks so much for coming by, guys. Hope you have had a wonderful week. Uh, Mika M stopped by earlier, but uh, looks like um, not able to stay this time. Griffin Fish Room, welcome, buddy. We got Arpit's, uh, Arpit Vlogs. Father Fish, Anthony's Fishy Friends. Hey, what's up, Anthony? I've been checking out your stuff recently, too. I dug into a lot of your stuff this morning. Um, Colette S. Hey, Colette. I think I saw you earlier. We got Susan for SLC Aquatics. Muppet929. Sandy. Cody Sun. Chevy Fish. So many amazing people. Chattanooga Ed. And hopefully I haven't missed anyone. Big J's. And I think I may have not missed anyone this time. It'd be amazing. I think that's it. Cool. So, guys, uh, remember um, some last, let's see, this last weekend, uh, I actually made one of those YouTube, you know, community posts. Social media really is what it is for YouTube and kind of shows up on people's subscribers' feeds. And I made a really short, like a 20 or... Um, Oh, thanks, Susan. I made a, a really short, uh, like a, um, I guess a 20 or 30 minutes. I left it up and then I deleted it after a while. I thought, eh, I don't want to, don't want to leave it up. But I mentioned something about, uh, uh, something about what happened in that posting as well as in, in a few people's live streams. Um, so I got a weird meeting request at work. Um, and given everything that's happening, you know, in the world, this global thing, this bad thing that's going on that we don't want to talk about. Because YouTube's pretty strict about that. Um, basically got a meeting request for Monday morning. And I thought for sure, here it comes, furlough. Definitely going to be furloughed on this one. Um, they had been furloughing people left and right. Um, I wish I could say that I got furloughed. Um, unfortunately, due to this thing going on, my employer's revenue stream has been slashed by almost 70%. And um, I was laid off. Actually, many, many people were laid off. So... That is a real bummer. Um, so I guess that's something I have to cover. Um, yeah, I'm not going to, uh, you know, get knocked over and stay down. I licked my wounds for about a day, um, picked myself back up, already back out in the market. Um, plenty of stuff going on. So, you know, you just got to get up. I mean, this is historically, what are there, 16, 18 million unemployed Americans right now because of this thing. And uh, I'm one of them. Do not pass go. Do not collect future payroll checks. So. <laughs> that was a bit of a not a great Monday. But like I said, uh, well, like I was told, um, who was it? It was um, Sand Creek Aquatics, actually. I give him a shout out because he told me in one of his live streams, I mentioned it, and uh, he was like, um, you just got to keep your head up, man. Redfish, you know, you got to keep your head up. And he's right. I mean, there's what else can you say about it? These things happen. Um, so that's what I'm doing. I've, uh, I've been really pounding the pavement out there, virtually pounding the pavement. I have not been leaving my house. But, um, you know, uh, Griffin, I'm sorry, man. Uh, yeah, I heard you mention something, buddy, in one, of your, um, in one of your streams saying, yeah, at least two weeks coming up. And, uh, yeah, I didn't know if it's, a, if it's like a temporary thing, uh, Griffin Fish Room, or it's like a permanent thing. And it, it's hit, it, this thing is hitting everywhere. I mean, it's, it's exploding all kinds of stuff. Um, unfortunately, uh, 
some of the more like I guess you could say more, like the professional level people are, are generally the first to go because they tend to be kind of maybe a little bit expensive sometimes. So it is what it is. That's fine. We pick ourselves up and we keep on going. In fact, I don't even want to talk about that anymore. I want to show you guys some cool stuff that I got. You got to stay positive and uh, nothing makes me feel more positive than some of these really killer. Hey, Cichlids23, Zen Ginger, thanks for coming by. Um, nothing makes me feel more positive after that cruddy news than some of these things I got. Check this out. New beautiful, beautiful additions to the farm tank. I want to go over some of these, some of these lovelies. Really, really nice. Some nice additions to the farm tank. This plant here. There's three of them. It's Cufia anagaloidea. It's a plant that comes from Brazil, mainly. And uh, it's it's really kind of uh, it's really kind of rotala like, and uh, if you get it, you know, under under the right uh, nutrients and the right light, it can get kind of you know kind of pink, kind of red looking. But uh, that's pretty nice. I like it. it. It's it's a pretty difficult uh, plant to uh, to mess with. It doesn't tolerate a lot of a lot of abuse. That's for sure. Really soft water, very, very soft water, good light, good water um, column fertilization. You should be okay with it. This one here, this is the subject of our live stream tonight. This plant here, in fact, these three plants, there's three of them here. This is Ludwigia SP Red. Okay, that's, that's what it's been called in the trade. Notice the leaf shape, definitely oval but pointy on the end. It's this one I'm talking about here, guys. Um, that's Ludwigia SP Red. Now, let me take your attention over here to this Ludwigia Repens S. Uh, what is it? Sorry, Ludwigia Repens Mini Super Red. This red plant that I'm focusing on here. So this is Ludwigia Repens Mini Super Red. This red plant here. Very, very red. And this, in the trade, is being called Ludwigia SP Red. Now, there are definitely differences. This plant grows definitely more lanky. Um, the leaves are further apart. Um, definitely the rachis, the, the stem. You know, when I say rachis, that actually means spine, the spine of the plant. It's definitely not, doesn't, doesn't grow quite as rigid as that plant. However, I really cannot ignore the fact that that leaf shape, you can't deny that has to be, I mean, they're saying SP red, but that has to be repens. I'm really guessing it's, it's repens, but, um, that's what we're going to be messing with today. We're going to get to the bottom of that, but let's move on this next plant. See if I can this up here. It's being blown around by my filtration. Yeah, this plant here, this is Rotala SP Maca Red. This is definitely um, a really, I've never had a Rotala like this. It, it resembles um, Walikii and some of the others, but it's definitely different. Now, this is called Maca Red. It's really, really nice. This is one I've been wanting for a while. These three stems here. Definitely, uh, again, um, all of these plants, uh, thing in common, you know, soft water, uh, acidic water, um, good water column fertilization, and good lighting. You should be good. Now, this next plant here that I've got my hand kind of behind, this is a really gorgeous plant. And, and uh, this is actually a Ludwigia. This is Ludwigia, sorry, Ludwigia senegalensis also known as Ludwigia guinea. It's a really, really pretty plant. It comes from uh, Western Africa. It is a Ludwigia, but it's, it does things that other Ludwigias don't. If you'll notice the leaves growing out of the stem, the rachis, they don't directly oppose each other, which is strange for a Ludwigia, quite frankly. 
And um, unlike a lot of other Ludwigias, this, this, um, this guinea here is very difficult to grow. Yeah, um, Susan, this, this, is a, this is a super melter, this plant. Yeah, this, this is, a, this is a quite a difficult stem plant. It tends to, to grow really long and, and kind of lanky a little bit. Um, but if, you, if you've got your, your water param parameters right, it can be really, really a rewarding plant. This next one here, I don't know if you guys have, have ever kept this before. This is, you can get it in tissue culture from time to time. This one here, this is Rotala macrandra mini butterfly. Picked up a few stems of it to play with, perhaps in the lab one of these days. So yeah, I've got these these five came in and in this front row, and as always, we've got our little green tiger tiger bar gang that that come up here to see if they can get a little snack. I had eight in here, but unfortunately that. That first day I lost um, one, uh, that next day I lost one. And then something like four days ago, another one passed. Um, they were both the uh, kind of the runts, unfortunately. So that's sad. Looks like we've got 18 people in here and 15 thumbs up. That's great, guys. I really appreciate that. So what I want to do today is I want to figure out, it's annoying me, I want to figure out if this plant is in fact just yet another strain of Ludwigia repens. And I wager that it is, but I can't be certain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to follow the same micropropagation protocol that we use. Oh, Freshwater Adventures, yeah, I really love Green Tiger Barbs too, man. They're fantastic. What I'm going to use is, is the same micropropagation protocol on a, on a small X plant, like probably right here, and uh, see if it responds. If it does, that's, that's fairly proof positive right there, right there that this uh, SP red is, is another um, strain of repens. So that's what we're going to do. Of course, I've got all the other plants going as normal. Everything is going uh, really nicely in here. These guys, you guys have already eaten twice. You're not getting more. Really pretty fish. They're not shy at all anymore. Uh, a couple of them are. This guy just wants, wants to be centerfold. Green tiger barbs. Really, really fun fish to keep. And I really like them when they're little babies like this as well. A lot of fun. All right, so let's see what we have to see. So I prepped the lab. I got a lot of stuff done, uh, lots. Uh, we don't have to do a lot of stuff that we normally do in here. Let me um, see if I can jump right in. Actually, bear with me, guys. Let me fix this tripod. All right, that's, I think that's going to be better. So we've got our, uh, I already mixed up a bunch of stuff in advance. This is uh, multiplication media we've got here. We've already got our sterilizing solution ready to go. Um, this is water for rinsing, sterile water for rinsing. And you should be pretty familiar with the procedure by now. Sterile tools, alcohol lamp. In fact, we can kill that. Um, test tubes, all that good stuff. So, first things first. We grab a sister, just a, a spare, regular old bottle, or a jar rather, clean, doesn't have to be sterile. Put some water in it. And then <clears throat> Actually, I 
Just going ahead and just do a cutting right here. See, I'm going to take. I'm going to take this guy right here. This light's really getting in my way. Jeez. All right. There we go. Jeez. And I'm just messing everything up today, guys. Put this here. And replant this plant that I knocked out. It's a bummer. Gosh. All right. It definitely has, uh, hey, Punchy Pains, I just noticed you're in there, and hey, Scott's Aquatics. It definitely has kind of a vine-like habit. I, I see it in a lot of uh, Indonesian aquascaping videos. When you plant a lot of it um, really closely together, it, it has a really pretty effect. But again, I aim to prove or disprove that this is, in fact, repens. I think it is. I mean, the leaf shape is... Pretty undeniable. The problem is it's being called SP Red. Let's see. Let's see what we can see. All right. All right. So if you guys remember before, we're not sterile or anything yet. Just reach right in there. This guy out. So we've got two shoots. We want meristems. We're going to harvest meristems here, right on the end. I like the, the, the end most meristems from these two shoots. Now, I have a sinking feeling looking at these leaves. They look very, very thin on this plant. And looking at it, it's very delicate. So I'm going to go easy on this plant. I'm using half as much sterilizing agent, which is that NADCC, and I'm going with a little bit extra tween 20 to try to make up for it. So the first thing, we want to take leaves off because, remember what I've said, leaves are a source of contamination. They carry lots of fungus. Get rid of them unless you're doing a, you know, a leaf tissue culture. So we're not sterile. Don't have to be fancy schmancy. Oh, you know what? <laughs> it would help if I actually put a blade on a scalpel. Now, there very well could be somebody in here who has actually put blades on scalpels before. Maybe a serial killer. Bob, you were a nurse for a while. I bet you have. And Bob, I'm not saying you're a serial killer. Or are you? I'm joking. I'm joking. So I thought you guys might <clears throat> be interested sometime to see um, how these things go on. You have to be careful putting them on because you can really, really hurt yourself. They're actually keyed. Oh, Bob, you know, I see yep on my phone. Yeah, you got to be careful. You can take a finger off like no joke. These are sterile. I don't care because I'm going to flame the heck out of them anyway. So this is not the blade end. This is the butt. Okay. Grab it here. Pull it out. Those things will mess you up. Okay. So these, I don't know if you can see. Let's see if I can focus on this. This is keyed. All right. And this has a, a groove in it. The idea is it goes in here. There's a, I don't know if you can see. There's a groove around this, right? And it kind of slides through it like it's in a sleeve, because it is. What you do is you try to get it seated in there. 
you gotta get it sliding just like like that okay and then you grab it with slight pliers here you should be careful because you don't want to go to the hospital with this stuff going around well you know what then you pull it really hard and it'll lock in there just like that and it's down in the in the groove you see so that's how you put on a scalpel all right now i can get my plant out <laughs> can i need a scalpel hey dr black i just saw you pop in bud hey and danikin too sorry if i missed you guys if you were in before okay i'm working on this guy we're gonna get rid of these leaves for they are sources of contamination often i don't really have to be super fancy schmancy about this it's not sterile yet can leave the uh, nubs of the petioles, that's fine. The petioles are the little simple organs that attach the, uh, the leaf to the rachis, or the stem. All right, get these out of there. Man. Pain in the butt. All right. this back in the water All right. Hey, HC, what's up, man? Medfish Diva. Welcome, guys. Sorry when I'm doing these tissue cultures. I, I usually can't really, you know, see the uh, chat. All right. Cool. So we got one. Run ahead and make sure it stays wet. It's, it's fine. All right, do the other one now. So we're gonna we're gonna do two of these and see if I can get it to respond to the same phytohormonal profile that we know that Ludwigia repens responds to because we've done it many times. In fact. Get rid of that leaf. Get rid of this most likely fungus laden leaf, leaf. and that one. Oops. Man, get a microscope soon. Eyes are getting worse and worse. All right. I'm going to try these two in a, in a week, weekish solution. Probably not going to go for the whole 17 minutes like we normally do, because as I said, I've done enough of these that I know when I'm kind of looking at leaves and I can kind of feel how the plant, you know, how thin it is, how weak it, how, how maybe, you know, weak and, and stuff it is. I definitely 
can tell this plant is not one to be rough with. It's a very thin-skinned plant, if you will. All right, I'm just gonna take our two pieces of X plant and Davy Jones's luck. Thirty minutes in. Use that as my timer. There we are. Agitate, my pretties. How's the audio, by the way, guys? Okay. I mean, if it's not, <laughs> we're halfway through, so. <laughs> Too late to check on audio, I guess. All right. Hey, thanks, Muppet. I appreciate that, man. <laughs> Oh, Bob. It's always a concern that maybe you didn't trim those endmost leaves enough. If you do that with Rotala, it won't tissue culture. That looks like might be questionable on one of them. We'll see. So we'll let that sit there for about eight more minutes. So in the meantime, I suppose we can have a look at these guys. Come on, guys. Rise and shine. So I decided to combine basically all the... Uh, the guppies I had left, the Platinum Galaxy Tiger guppies, decided to combine them all into one, one large colony. Threw some stone in here. Actually, I picked some of this up um, from a big box store. This is Siriu. It's actually pretty good. I was surprised uh, that this place had halfway decent, uh, actually more than halfway decent Siriu stone. But yeah. I basically uh, have these guys in just a, a semi-deep se uh, semi um, sand substrate, and it seems to be doing great. These guys are... Got quite a few females in here that are going to be popping really soon. Yeah, these males shimmer like crazy, the strain, under these uh, really bright light. I don't know if that color shows up. Um, often uh, YouTube's uh, compression on their live streams kind of butchers color. Yeah, they're doing well. Yeah, there's a lot of females in here getting ready to pop, and man, those fry are in trouble in this tank. Yeah, Susan, I, I need to. I was just thinking that. Um, I have a ton of plants. I actually have a lot of other stuff I can put in here. Uh, they have a few more days before they start dropping, but it's getting soon. That's for sure. Um, I want to put some cover in here. I actually have a really large breeding box as well. That is really nice. There's a couple in here that are taking on definitely a much more, as opposed to platinum, they're just copper. And they're really nice. Let me see. There's one right there. See this guy? See how copper that guy is? He's not platinum at all. Come on, dude. This guy. There's two in there. I think they're... They might be trying to morph or something. 
really, really copper on top. And that is not actually normal for this strain. And I think there's one other one that has that going on. I might actually uh, try to um, isolate that and play with it a little bit. This is more the normal um, color of the males, this platinum, with a touch of that kind of yellow copper on top. But this guy, he's just, you know, crazy, that dude. Anyway. Yeah, so I set this other one up, and I have some plants going in here. I'm going to have to trim these back big time. They, they got zapped. Um, so I already trimmed this, these back. This is uh, Limnophila um, Aromatica uh, Normal. Limnophila Aromatica. Really, really nice plant. Very beautiful leaf shape. I like to get a lot of it going in here. And then this, this is Limnophila SP Vietnam. Again, with that SP thing, right? But this one, I actually believe it. Uh, this is, I've never seen this plant before. I, I think this may very well be unidentified. Then over here, this is also, get this out of the way. This is also Limnophila aromatica, but this is mini. I'm going to have to take these much better ends off of this and, and uh, basically get rid of the rest. It, it, didn't, it didn't ship well. It's basically a lot of it's dying back, so... But I can definitely harvest these beautiful ends, this, this, and this, and uh, I can have it back to that, that height in no time. So yeah, I'm, I'm slowly getting a second tank of weird species, kind of semi-rare species going on. Got my uh, good old nano diffuser cranking out some, uh, some carbon. Carbon, carbon, always need that. Uh-oh, just lost our light, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, the tiger barbs are going to start tripping out. They always, oh, the sky's falling. The light is gone. The giant food head will not be visiting us until tomorrow. That's what my fish and animals call me, by the way, guys, the, the giant food head. It's all they see is my big, bald mug. Pops up in front of their, their world, and, and then you can, uh, you know, we expect that food will be coming. So, yeah. Yeah, Bob, I ab absolutely can uh, culture that stuff. I can take uh, any of the meristems from any of this pl these plants. Now, the trick is, what do they respond to? This is, what is it, right? It, we know it's a limnophila, or we think it is, but what species is it? So you got to kind of start with an experiment with these. you got to start with a control, and your control is typically half-strength M&S, which is to say, you know, the media that I mix up, um, you would mix it up without phytohormones, half strength. So half the amount of sugar for a carbon source, half the amount of um, um, everything, basically, but no hormones. And that becomes your control. And then you start taking little meristems off of it and plugging it into your control. Alongside your control, you use well-known combinations of hormones like... Um, um, TDZ and NAA or TDZ and IAA, stuff like that. And your control, you'll always get some, if you, if you did it right, you know, you'll, you're almost absolutely certain to get activity out of your control, but it won't be micropropagation. That meristem will probably just make one shoot out of each meristem. So, and then from there, you, you play with the, the different strengths until you find that winning combination. Yeah. It's a lot of work, actually. It's a lot of lab work. Good stuff. So it looks like they have been in there for nine minutes and nine seconds, roughly. And I am not going to push them very far beyond that because, as I say, I can tell this is not a plant to trifle around with, like really strong sterilizing agents. Move it in there a bit longer. I'm going to re sterilize. Let's give them really good swirls like that. You can keep them um, submerged for a couple of minutes at a time. Okay. Let me get some alcohol.
this again. Make sure that our chopping block is sterile, our killing jar. All right. Otherwise, all of this didn't matter. <laughs> we got a bunch of microorganisms everywhere. All right. Then we can't over sterilize. All right. So here I have some pure sterile water that I'm going to use for rinsing. And I normally don't do that. You don't have to do that with NADCC usually, but in this case I am because I used quite a bit of tween 20 in this stuff. That's what that foaming is. You don't want that in your tissue cultures. So, with that, I still have some fuel in there. I guess we're good. All right. Oh, you know what? Jeez. I'm kind of skipping something important here. Hmm. Let's do something else. I'll show you guys how we're going to do this. This is a bunch of multiplication media for Ludwigia repens I made. I'll show you how we open these. You see what I'm doing? I'm flaming the jar like this with the uh, basically the flow hood pushing the uh, the flame up against where I want it. We do this before we open them, because if you don't, you might accidentally flush contamination up in there, you know, under the, uh, the cap. All right. That's quite hot. It's quite warm. All right. I'm hit my hands, sterilize them with alcohol. I'm not going to use gloves for this because we're just doing just a very, very short number of tissue cultures, just two. It's a very, very short bit of lab work. All right. Sterilize your old hands. Actually, I'm going to hit this again with the ring off. I almost had a little faux pas there for a minute, guys. a couple times. Don't want to contaminate all this media. This is sterile. Alright. Alright. Open it always facing the flow hood. Try not to spill it everywhere. That's very difficult to do. Because these seal so incredibly well, these jars. Mm, gosh. I swear these things are terrible. That's the end of these jars for me, man. Crazy. Really stuck on there. <laughs> All right.
thing is insane. It's actually, it's like it's welded on. That's insane. Look, I'm actually bending it to get it off. Wow. Hey. Oh, man. All right. I'm seriously throwing these jars away. That's insane. Ugh. All right. I mean, I appreciate a good seal, but that's ridiculous. And I don't think so, Sandy. I really don't. I just think that they're they're just too good. A victim of their own success, perhaps. <laughs> so again, now that it's open, I want to flame it. Flame, flame, flame. Especially where we're going to pour it from, right? So th this side, I'm flaming like crazy right here. I'm getting it really hot for a reason. I was touching it. Probably got some contamination on the edge of that. Could have. All right. That's flamed really, really well. So that side that we flamed is what we're going to pour from. Good to show you guys what, you know, how you do this, this lab protocol stuff. Just take a little bit of what we need and that's it. Yeah, Bob. Definitely vacuum sealed, that's for sure, but man, it's a little ridiculous. Okay, got that. Keep this sterile. I'm gonna... Actually, I may just toss this out. I'm not sure if it's contaminated after this. Anyway, so I'm going to move this, and we have some sterile test tubes here. We're going to go ahead and uh, we sterilize our hands. We've been touching all kinds of stuff. All right, I'm gonna open this guy here and get our X plant out. Oh man. Ah, there we go. Cooling these down by waving them all the time. In case you're wondering, hey, what's it doing? It'll stay hot for a really long time. They're quite thick. Okay. Actually, right here. There's another one in here. Let me see if I can find it. Here we go. Just give them both a rinse here. All right.
Hold on a second, guys. I'm going to have to pull some of this water off. Sterilize these forceps one more time and get these guys out. At least one of them out. All right. Hey, Alice. Hey, H. Welcome. There we go. I'm going to put the whole thing in there. I'm not going to trim it down anymore. So I'm going to see just how many nodes respond and how. And there are about three nodes in there. So this one's there. Okay, we have to pour one more of these guys. Sterilizing the forceps one last time. Hey Alice, I'm I'm trying to tissue culture some Ludwigia SP Super Red with a, a specific recipe for Ludwigia repens. In an effort to prove that SP, this Ludwigia SP Red, is in fact um, Ludwigia Repens. tissue cultures, new ones here. We'll see how they respond. All right. Give us a few days. I don't know. We might we might get some contamination. That was pretty messy. I don't feel good about that one. But we'll see. Let me just turn this off. I am going to get rid of this. I'll just make some more. Whoops. All right. Now let me get some peace from this thing. Ah, isn't that so much nicer? Okay, well that was uh, that was interesting. Oh, look at that! We've been on for exactly fifty-four minutes and thirty seconds. That's not bad. So yeah, um, what I'm trying to do, in case you come in kind of late in the stream, I'm making some tissue cultures of this plant. Um, this is a small, basically a cutting of um, Ludwigia sp uh, red. Here's another one. Um, and this media, this multiplication media here, is uh, from a well-known recipe that works with uh, Ludwigia repens, which we have some right here. You see, 
Here's a tissue culture of some Ludwigia Repens Mini Super Red. So, um, so yeah. Yeah, a little Breaking Bad vibe. <laughs> well, thank you. I love that movie. Um, actually, no. So what we're doing is um, we're trying to figure out, is this a, a Repens or not? Because it's really big on the uh, kind of the scene right now. And if it responds to this Ludwigia Repens formula, well, then there you go. Deduction. So we'll let that rock and roll. Okay. Let's head back over and see what's been going on in chat. Got a lot of folks in here. All right. What have I missed? I'm sure tons. Oh, Susan, uh, thank you very much, and, and bless you, too. God bless, too. Have a great, happy Easter. I guess you're, you're heading out. Thanks for stopping by. Let's see. Okay, it looks like we've got a question from 8C. Um, scan back down. Okay. Uh, what are you using to hold your camera? I think I saw you able to use two hands. Um, yeah, I wish I wish I could use two hands. I'll show you exactly what I'm using. These little um, watch my columns. I don't even know what they're called. UB something. These little guys. Little kind of dinky, dinky little things. And it's got this little kind of stretchy, kind of stretchy thing. So to get it loaded in there, it's it's pretty uh, it's pretty easy. So let's get this uh, flip back around here. Sorry. There we go. Yeah, I have a third arm. <laughs> oh, exactly. Cichlids twenty three knows me. You know me so well, man. Man, it is hot down here. It's always hot down here. I'm not sure if I missed too many uh, comments or questions. I think you guys have seen me do this before. In fact, I know you have. <laughs> Sean OOTD, yep. What'd you do Friday night? Oh, I just watched Jason cut his finger off. Yeah, I have, uh, I've hurt myself with those scalpels before, man. They are not, they're, they're nasty, nasty stuff. We got so many awesome people in here. Hey, Sand Creek Aquatics in here. We got all kinds. So guys, uh, yeah, it is, it's been a week. Uh, like I say, um, for people coming in um, a little bit late, um, got some bad news Monday. I uh, was laid off uh, due to this COVID-19 stuff. So that's a bummer, but not taking, uh, not taking any time to feel sorry for myself or anything like that. I mean, millions and millions of people are out of, uh, out of work right now. So got right back up on the horse, um, put the resume out there and boom, boom. I've already had like two interviews. So, um, uh, remote interviews, teleconference interviews, but um, they've been there and, uh, you know, the work's out there. So um, my line of work's kind of weird a little bit, but there's plenty of stuff out there where I live. So anyway, um, it looks like we are right at 8.29 p.m. my time. Um, I really appreciate you guys stopping by. If you like hanging out with me, if you like kind of the science stuff and the plant stuff and talking about all this stuff, um, I really appreciate it if you consider subscribing to my video, like, share, subscribe, all of that stuff you hear all the time. Um, Alice KH, hi Alice. Uh, what did I do before? I was in uh, R and D without going into too many details. So, uh, definitely science and technology field. Um, it was somewhat centered around um, medicine, but not directly. It's 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 complicated. But, um, yeah, these things happen. Hey, thanks, Anthony's Fishy Friends. Yeah, guys, um, I really appreciate you coming by and hanging out with me. That's pretty much my hour up. Um, um, Zen Ginger, uh, another question. Uh, are you rehirable uh, when open? Uh, yes, I am, and I'm really not interested in going back to that place. So not because I was laid off, but there were, there were other 
other problems with uh, really uh, not a lot of faith in uh, in some uh, executive uh, level people where I used to work. Uh, very little faith in uh, some decisions they've made. So I'm kind of taking this as a positive karma thing, kind of as a uh, maybe it's a sign uh, because there are some um, really interesting um, stuff out there. No, Kurt, I won't. Hey, Kurt, I didn't realize you were in here, bud. Sorry, I uh, I missed Kurt, guys. Let's give a special shout out to my buddy Kurt Chetchuk, my uh, childhood friend of many many years. Um, yeah, absolutely, Kurt. You're right. Um, I am not gonna miss it at all. Um, timing could have been better, but oh well, it is what it is. Anyway, guys, that is my hour up. Uh, we did. I uh, I did a couple tissue cultures. We're gonna see if we get some activity. If this uh, SP Red is Repens, um, we may have to figure out a new name for it. Maybe they're just calling it that. We'll just keep on calling it that. But anyway, I'll get a little peace of mind if I can figure out what plan is this. It looks similar to this other one and this other one. So hopefully uh, this will shine a light on the mystery. And anyway, I'm not sure who's up next. Who is going up next before I sign off? I'm not sure if anyone is planning on uh, uh, doing a kind of a spontaneous live stream, but you have about a minute left. We can we can send people on your way. We got any takers? We got Dr. Black. You could go up next. Big J, you want to go up, Big J? Anybody else? Guys, I really got to go because I am hungry. I got to eat dinner. <laughs> I am starving. Anyone else? Go on once. Go on twice. All right. It sounds like Anthony's fishy friends will be going live stream tonight after he eats. And that's what I'm going upstairs to do myself. Really appreciate you guys coming by. Um, as I fumbled over before, like, share, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. And thanks so much for coming by. We'll be doing this again very soon. Don't you worry yourself one bit. Take care, guys.